UMC interview. My name is Rich Trani. Thanks for watching today. I'm very excited to announce we've got two guests on our program, and uh, I'd like them to introduce themselves. Our first is uh, Joe with 888 Voip. Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself and company, please. Hey, good, uh, good morning. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me. I'm really excited to take part in all the questions here. Um, I'm a senior business development manager with 888 VoIP. We are one of Yaling's only platinum distributors in the United States. We actually just received the, the award again. I want to say it was the eighth or ninth year in a row. So we're really excited about the partnership, uh, really excited about growing that part too, and uh, you know, look forward to what's to come in the future. Fantastic. And give us, uh, if you don't mind, just give us like 20 seconds on your company and what you guys do. Yeah, so we are a voice over IP hardware distribution company. We've got a focus on voice over IP products and solutions. Um, we do make sure that we're, you know, certified with the manufacturers that we carry, but our focus is really supporting the reseller and integrator channel. Uh, we do have a, um, you know, focus on that part of the channel. We like to grow those relationships and we like to make sure that we stay in touch with our partners too on anything new that's coming through the, the channel. Great, and we've got uh, Tyler Chan with Yealink. Uh, Tyler, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company, please. Hi there, so, um, so I'm just so excited to join this um, sort of like a meeting or interview today with um, Joel and everyone here. So my name is Tyler, I'm the channel manager with Yealink, responsible for the North American market. So uh, speaking about Yealink, so we are a unified communication and collaboration company that specifies in um, voice, um, Teams voice, um, Zoom voice, or whatever, and also video conferencing devices, including also headsets and stuff like that. So we try to build a unified communication, you know, hardware to to support um, companies and enterprises to achieve uh, higher efficiency in terms of uh, working in uh, environment and stuff like that. Fantastic. And this is uh, an exciting time to be interviewing you both because of these profound changes we've seen in the last a uh, year and a half with the pandemic. I'm curious how these changes impacted your business uh, and, and possibly your customers, your partners. What, what have you seen in the market? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, to start off with that question, using my, my case scenario right now, I mean, I'm working from my home office um, as if I was in the, the standard office. So the flexibility of these devices, uh, the ability to maneuver from location to location, almost seems like we didn't really take a step away. Um, it almost feels like I was in the same environment, regardless of physically being with people or, or by myself. So depending on you know who, who you are, other people have different preferences. Some enjoy working remotely a little bit more than being in the office. You know That social interaction, now that we're starting to go back to a hybrid work environment, has definitely been something that I didn't even expect would be a big need for me, you know, something where maybe a few times during the week, I need to have, you know, a little more interaction with my, uh, my colleagues. Um, but as far as the reseller channel goes, I have seen a lot of increase for the hybrid work environment, the flexibility of having these devices work at home. They're mobile, so you can take them from home to the office if you need to. Uh, they're cost effective, so you can have devices at all different locations. So having that flexibility that, uh, you know, the need to have anything that you that you need for, you know, your setups for your video calls for your audio calls. Just having that availability and flexibility has been a huge part. That's great. Now um, we've seen this massive shift, uh, not just for for you guys, but obviously the whole world. And you guys, you're right in the the thick of things in terms of supplying products to keep us connected while we are uh, out of the office. And I'm wondering, uh, did you see tremendous demand increases. And, and then what about the supply? I mean, we're hearing uh, lots of talk about supply chain these days. It was, was there any impact to your business? Yeah, so I like to take that question specifically. So just following on um, the previous question, Joe just quoted. So at the beginning of 2020, we were like overwhelmed by the uh, massive uh, high demand on webcam and business headset, for example. Many people require, you know, just at least one set to keep their business going when they're at home. And I believe all vendors were experiencing um, a lot of problems, significant growth in all uh, these kind of products and no one had the perfect solutions to satisfy all these um, unexpected demands. Though this is a good question to worry about when demand is um, way oversupply. And with that learning course, um, Yelling realized these, you know, this kind of trend and we are getting more and more prepared on all of the product lines that being said, um, 
all personal devices such as headsets, webcam, nowadays are looking good in, in, in the supply aspect. And speaking of the video conferencing market specifically, as more and more people are getting back to office nowadays and kids are returning to school, uh, we expect a high volume demand on this market at the very, very, very early stage. The course that we learn from the exceeding um, demand on webcam, alerting us, alerting us that to you know, get more prepared in, um, on inventory to all these kind of things, which is extremely important. Uh, given the recent shortage in um, chipset and price increase in raw materials, many vendors these days having a hard time supplying um, these popular items. However, at Yearlink here, we, are, we, we have planned this before and we have been able to open the windows of, of opportunities more when other vendors are you know, kind of still struggling in supplying all these kind of demands. By saying that, it doesn't necessarily saying that Yearlink would be able to supply all demands or requirements, but I would be confident to say 90 or 90, 95% of the demand would be satisfied. Yeah, it's really challenging these days. So that, that's impressive. Those, those, uh, that percentage is um, it's significant. And uh, we know that uh, we're seeing supply shortages in uh, not just uh, technology, but it, it seems to have... Uh, filter down into numerous other sectors as well. Part of it, part of it has to do with technology, and part of it has to do with uh, cybersecurity, right? We've got, we've seen ransomware attacks and things like that. So the global supply chain is really straining, and it's good to hear you guys are at such a high percentage. So uh, as we're now transitioning to remote, and you mentioned hybrid work, uh, how are you helping your customers uh, just overcome this transition? Yeah, I mean, staying in front of the scenarios that we're all encountering now is huge. You know, making sure we're staying in contact with our partners, seeing what their processes are, what their plans are. I mean, that helps us not only forecast for them, but forecast with, you know, manufacturers, Tyler included. I mean, you know, we're constantly in discussion of how we can better the situation how we can make people feel like regardless of where they are, they're going to get the same sense of technology and stability for their office use, remote, hybrid, you know, full-time, in-person. I think you know, being available, being able to have someone to call or contact at all times is definitely going to be a big piece of that. Um, but like I said, you know, in the first, uh, first question there, the flexibility of this device, uh, these devices, the product, the full solution, I think that really keeps people in touch with everybody that they're working with. I mean, like I said, even if you're sitting by yourself or if you're in an office full of employees, you don't feel like you're on an island where you're missing out on a piece of the equipment needed to make your work day, you know, as smooth as possible. So uh, having the availability and the interaction, you know, with everybody and being on the same page is going to take us a long way. Yeah, um, I just wanted to add a point here, actually, uh, when it says how the way, you know, from our end as a vendor, how do we, help customers in the remote or hybrid work environment. So our mentality here at Ealing is not to change users' working style, like fundamentally. And instead, um, we try to maintain the way how customers work, just like it, when you're in the office. It is all about efficiency, right? So in the office, for example, yes, you just go, so get used to your phone. However, getting back to, to home, a phone with various you know, network connections could be a bizarre. So it's kind of hard for uh, users to maintain, you know, using a phone at home, just like in the office. So we, you know, we, we kind of introduced products such as like, like the uh, MP50 uh, Teams USB phone, where you can just plug it into your laptops and use it just, just a phone style, the way how you work in the office, that'll be just be the same in off, at home as well. So that, that way, you know, through pandemic, through this hybrid work, it, it kind of, you know, motivate us to, you know, try to think of how to design a product and satisfy the customer demand as well, just to add that. Yeah, and it, it's really interesting, the future of work that we've talked about. I mean, my company, TMC, we even have a future of work expo. We've had it for years. And, and now, you know, the, the parts of what's happening in, in post-pandemic is what we have been talking about for years, but we didn't expect, because the future of work really means a lot of different things, but the, it, the location of work has really taken a, a dramatic change in our brains. And so the question is now, you know, are you seeing dramatic changes to the future of work? I mean, it sounds like you are when you have a phone you can plug into your laptop. That makes a lot of sense and you can get right on Teams. And then how, how long do you guys think remote work is going to be here to stay? Because we're, we're seeing 
Uh, we're seeing surveys from employees that uh, say 40% of them won't return to the office. They'll quit. They'll, you know, uh, a bunch of people at Apple, it wasn't a significant number, but, you know, it was a few hundred people complained. They don't want to go back to the office. Even I think it was three days a week. They want a more flexible kind of situation uh, where they can go back when they want potentially. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so just to add on that, so just kind of repeat the, the answer that, that was, um, you know, kind of answer in, in the previous questions. The future of work, you know, no one can predict what's going on in the future. But in the short term, I, I would say in the next, you know, a year or two, people will still maintain this kind of flow where half work from home and half in the office and stuff like that. And Yiling as a vendor, we will kind of keep developing products that, you know, efficiency is the overall mentality of Yiling. We'll try to maintain that efficiencies. You know, at Yiling, personally, myself as, as a channel manager, I have to interact with so many people around, like people's in design teams, supply teams, and stuff like that, and Microsoft, Zoom, and also, you know, like Edit Evoke, for example. So these include a lot of interactions. And, you know, people work from home, they tend not to, you know, be at that kind of situation where they work as the same in the office. So we try to introduce a lot of products like WH headsets, the MP50 phones, try to keep people, you know, just make them feel like, hey, there's not much a difference when you work from home and when you get back to the office. And by saying that, it doesn't necessarily saying returning to the office would not happen at all. Because from my point of view, it's kind of a, a little bit a little bit different. That is, people back in the day they have little or no requirements to video conferencing. For example, we just need a laptop. Everything is integrated in the laptop. But nowadays, we're kind of forced to have um, meetings on a daily basis. So people have more requirements on qualities, products and everything. So that remains a huge business opportunity for both the distributors like 888 and also for us as well. And does that change your product portfolio at all? Are you gonna, are you gonna see an evolution of, of even newer products? Like you've already come out with some really interesting ones. What about in the future? We, I, I feel like I it's think, not, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Tyler. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. My apologies. That's all right. So, uh, I mean, we are not really trying to fundamentally change the way how we, you know, work and stuff like that. Just so speaking of that, back in the day, Yelling is just a phone company, like a SIP legacy providers. But then we kind of extend that to, you know, unified communication, video conferencing and stuff like that. Because we see the market trend there, we try to extend the product line instead of say, hey, replace something. We try to extend something and then if ultimately we, we want it to be a unified communication provider that we can cope with, you know, every use of scenarios. When you enter in the office, when, they, when you return back home, everything you use, there is part of the alien. You go, Joe. Sorry, sorry about that as well. Go ahead, Joe. No, no, I was just going to agree with you. I mean, it seems like for me personally, what I've seen, what I've experienced uh, video being always available, but not maybe all 100% utilized has definitely changed. Uh, we're seeing that a lot where people are missing the face-to-face -face interaction or the, you know, handshaking interactions that you would get in a person-to-person -a -person conversation. But yet to experience that, even just a, a quick, you know, warm introduction to a partner that maybe you've never worked with or spoken with before, but to physically see somebody, it does change the landscape of your conversation. So, um, I think to go off of what Tyler said and even what you were mentioning, enhancing the video portion or enhancing the product line to have the, the ability to maybe not only do just audio, but also a visual representation of your company, of your policies, and even of the relationship building is going to take this a long way. Now, as these workers are moving back and forth between uh, the home, the office, and you know, maybe coffee shops, vacations, where, you know, wherever, wherever people go. I mean, if you, if you listen to the CEO of Airbnb, he said that this era of flexible work has really encouraged uh, workers to just go places and just work from anywhere and see the world while they're simultaneously able to work. Uh, so the question, which is natural from, from the tech community is supporting, how do we support people who could be on vastly different networks day to day, even hour to hour, um trying to make sure that they're productive what do, what do we do about that yeah productivity is definitely going to be a key factor for all of this so 
you know, you, you, you used to see uh, the, the entrepreneurs or the highly successful, you know, C-level p- partners in businesses on a beach working on their laptop or having the flexibility to pick up and go wherever they need to. You know, maybe nine to five is not for everybody. Sometimes you, you've got more things to do in the afternoon. So you take all of your work equipment with you, like you said, to a coffee shop or to a remote location to, you know, maybe separate yourself from the office. But um, being available, having the platforms that are also showing the ability to scale and integrate with uh, everyone's schedules or everyone's priorities. I mean, that's going to be a huge part of keeping the product productivity high, but, um, you know, keeping multiple avenues of communication open would give everybody internally at a company, you know, the ability to stay in front of their workers, making sure everybody's doing everything they need to. Um, but at the same time, you know, making sure that the network capabilities are always there is a huge piece of it. So, you know, having the ability to do sort of mobile hotspots or having, you know, broadband connectivity and and bandwidth in multiple locations is going to be something that you're going to want to, you know, obviously check out firsthand, but integrations with these products allow you to almost set up like a, a bring your own device kind of scenario where you've got, four out of the five components. Now you just have to make sure that the location you're going to has enough capacity to handle it. Or like I said, with a mobile hotspot, you know, with the network providers, you try to make things a little bit more flexible and try to have, you know, more abilities to work where and whenever. That's great. Tyler, did you want to add at all? Anything to that? No, not really from any, I think Joe definitely have a right answer there in, in, in the way how we, you know, kind of embrace the, the the working style in the future and stuff like that. Great. So um, as we're coming to the to the end of the interview, I just wanted to give you both. Um, I'll, I'll start with uh, with Tyler, if that's okay. Uh, you know, just some closing comments. If you have anything, just in terms of how you can help people, how they can, maybe how people can contact you, website things like that. Um, feel free to just let us know. Yeah. So um, actually, there's something that I would add on. Uh, before I come into the end of like like a speech and like that stuff like that, so there's a questions that I I, I was keep ask like, I was keep asking all the time that is um um you know in the future how do we shape our product portfolio I kind of say that at the beginning in terms of the way that we try to extend um extend our product lines, but I would like to give an example specifically. So you know Yilin, speaking of the video conferencing market, we have products that spend we have been now we have been the only vendor that is capable of covering almost every use of scenarios from auto spaces up to uh, large extra large environments so but there's a market trend that we kind of spot throughout um, COVID or throughout the pandemic that is some um, social distancing has been so encouraged uh, since COVID and that being said we have been selling tons of medium to large um, Solution, large um, rooms, rooms, video conferencing rooms, room solutions because we provide features such as wireless mics, speaker trackings, auto framing, these kind of features that keep everyone's in a safe distance and stuff like that. So this is kind of the way how we position our products. And then for huddle spaces or small, um, inv- uh, small meeting spaces, we think of all-in-one design bar, like collaboration bar would be a better solution because people in that kind of environment, they prefer a plug-and-play devices. So even when you have little or no IT knowledge about anything, you just simply, simply plug the pay- cable and then you can start a meeting straight away. And then um, if, well, that comes to the end of sort of like, my, my sort of like my overall conclusion to how we position our product lines. But if there's any more questions regarding Yelling's products, regarding our team's firm, our SIP legacies, our video conferencing, and even headsets, feel free to bounce off that email to me, Tyler at Yelling.com, or um, just our, you know, um, our unified sort of like um, universal contact. Uh, I think it's um, ucinfo at Yelling.com. So feel free to contact us through there. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, same same concept. You know, we've got a general email here. You can email sales at 888voip.com. You can contact um, our, our 800 number if you ever need anything. All of our sales reps are fully certified and, and capable to handle any questions that you have, not only from 
a pre-sales perspective, but even post-sales. You know, we've got a unified team of IT staff that can assist any technical questions, setup questions. You know, Tyler and myself are always in contact throughout the day, throughout the week. And we also try to stay in touch with our partners regarding any sort of, you know, support questions. But, um, you know, you can contact me directly. It's jlabella at 888voip.com. You can call into the general queue and ask for me directly. Or like I said, if I'm tied up, any of our sales reps here, we do work as a, a full team here to support the partner first. Uh, so we want to make sure that questions are answered, opportunities are taken care of, and then just overall, you know, comfort level on how to make the process as smooth as possible. Great, thanks. Great interview, guys, and thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks so much.